So this morning for our business spotlight, I'm talking to Stuart McDougall from Tanaka. Stuart, it's really great to have you on our program today. And uh, I'm sure the listeners and the viewers will learn a lot from you in terms of uh, your experience in business. Yeah, thanks, Bert. Appreciate you having me. Yeah. I hope uh, they get some value from what I can share. Yeah. Great stuff. Stuart, looks like you've got a lot of wisdom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> must be the great thanks. year. Yeah. Stuart, <laughs> just introduce yourself uh, to our listeners, please. Yeah, so uh, been Stuart, been in business for um, over thirty years now, um, and uh, we're the company Tanaka. I've been with them for twenty twenty five years, and uh, we we've changed over the years, but right now our uh, capabilities are in experience design and. Um, customer experience design specifically as well as innovation and uh yeah our purpose and why we're here is to make lives better and um, that's what we try and do every single day whether that's making the lives better of employees within businesses or the customers that work with those um, companies mm -hmm. and um, also making the lives better um, in terms of the impact that businesses can have on the environment as well as social, uh, you know, yeah. areas. So yeah, we we're very very passionate about it, and um, our team is quite passionate about it. And it's a question we ask ourselves constantly every single day: um, yeah. is how, how do we make these people's lives better? Awesome uh, vision to have, and, and great that you can live it. So so what makes you guys unique, and um, why should I do business with you? So um, a lot of the work that we do do is um, at the moment uh, catered for within the the big consulting agencies like Accenture, McKinsey, those sort of guys. And um, we feel that with being a niche sort of boutique kind of consulting company in the innovation experience design space, we're able to actually really embed ourselves within the organization and start to understand what um, how their business works, what their customers are looking for the needs and um, the pains and the gains and um, really start to think like that company and that organization and understand what their capacity is to solve those problems for their com uh, customers really, really well. I mean, we've, we've had a, a company that we worked for, uh, Complete Dog Food, um, and uh, they, uh, um, they, 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 they sort of brand color is orange. And um, Hank, the, the, the MD of that company, said to me, uh, you know, your blood is orange um, because he can see the passion that we have when we work in those companies to make sure that they're hugely successful and that they grow. Excellent. Thank you for that. Um, so so your growth in the, in the business or as a business, how, what do you attribute that to? So um, we obviously apply the, the same thinking that we do to our customers and that's understanding what their unmet needs are and um, really digging deep and, uh, you know, qual qualifying what's going to make their business grow. And so we find ourselves in a position where we're able to um, uh, get new, new products and services into these organizations and um, help them yeah. create new channels and revenue streams and yeah. grow their businesses and then they stick with us because they can see the results that yes. we produce for them and then uh, um yeah they, they they like to attach themselves to us i think also from the perspective of tanaka and the fact that tanaka has been around for 30 years yes it yeah. had, had, had to be adaptable and change okay. and we didn't always do the work that we're doing now you know we started off simply yes. as a funnily enough right in the very beginning yeah uh, but because of our understanding and and the mindsets within the organization that the environment changes and um the needs of people change and technology yes. changes yes that we we were very very adaptable and able to make changes within our organization to keep current and, and, and yeah. attract new businesses and customers okay so, so over COVID period, did you have to change what you were doing? Did you pivot the company at all? Oh wow, yeah, uh, actually more than once. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. We 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 went from print brokering to publishers to um, uh, 
brand development company to mm. um yeah i mean we pivoted quite considerably Funny. i think yeah. fun fundamentally why we landed up where we are today is at a period of time we were a digital marketing agency and we were building a mm. number of websites and uh mobile apps and things like yeah. that yes and um we would have this experience where some of them would do really, really well. And then we'd have an experience where they just wouldn't really meet the kind of return on, or, you know, yeah. what, what, what we had expected. And, and we couldn't quite ascertain what the reason behind that was. Yes. And then we started to dig a bit deeper into saying, well, how can we like navigate around that and make sure yes. that every project can be a success and there's certainty in, in the fact that it will be a success. Yes. And we found a company in the in America called IDEO. Mm -hmm. And IDEO is um, a human-centered design agency. And basically, the principles that they work on is that you need to understand your customer in depth, in detail, to really understand what they need and they want, and then start to design your products and services around those okay. needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they you'll design with certainty. There's other frameworks now that we use. Yeah. We use Tony Hawk's uh, Jobs to be Done framework as well, which yes. we yes. find very, very appealing because yeah. there you starting to dig into areas where your competition isn't even um, uh, working and, yeah. just, and and covering unmet needs around your product and service that you could quite easily meet yeah. and then grow your business. Grow your so, business. Yeah. yeah. So, so making sure you upsell and you actually understand the customer Almost better than themselves. Yeah, the, the, for us, the customer is the center to every decision that needs to yeah. be made. You know, a lot of uh, companies that we uh, initially engage with, yeah. they're saying, we've got these great ideas about products and services that we need to be developing to serve our customers. And then mm -hmm. we ask them, how do you know that? And they say, well, you know, within the organization, we realize that, um, you know, we have the capacity to build this. Yes. And we said, yeah, but it, does your customer really want that? Yes. Do they need it? Yeah. Because you're going to end up investing in that. <laughs> yeah. and ultimately, you're going to find that your engagement is low and, yeah. and your sales aren't where you expected yeah. them to be. Look, it was yeah. uh, quite interesting that you talk about it. When I worked for uh, you know fast-moving consumer goods, quite often production, new product development came up with products that there was no real need for in the market. But you know, sometimes management still made the decision to launch, and then it wasn't a great launch, and you know. I think what yeah. you're saying is undercover, you know, that get that need out there and then make sure that you serve. Yeah, that's that's common. And, and specifically in the companies that have, you know, massive turnovers and profits, they can afford to yeah. uh, throw money into a research and development division within the company um, with the expectation that if it fails, you know, it was an investment in, a, in, a, yeah. in, in living, basically. But you can avoid that. And, and it's, that's the work that we do. We can avoid that and say, we'll prioritize the things that your customer needs and wants, yes. um, and specifically the ones that are unmet by your competition, mm. and you're almost certain to make money out of it. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So as an employer, you obviously have employees. What's been your biggest learning as an employer? Um, I think one of the, the earliest lessons that I learned uh, when we were quite small and in the early days and we had, um, you know, employees that were probably doing multiple jobs and had multiple responsibilities um, and they added a lot of value to the business was when you got that um, letter of resignation from them and you had that empty feeling in your stomach yeah. of like, how the hell am I going to replace <laughs> this person because they did so yeah. much in this business. Um, you know, uh, in those early stages, I learned quite quickly after it happening, you know, three or four times mm -hmm. that if you structure your replacements, it's actually an opportunity for the business. Yes. It's an opportunity to change things up. It's an opportunity for you to see if you can add value in a different area of your business by utilizing that, that resources, um, yeah. you know, the previous re resources that you had going to that previous employee. Yeah. Um, and, um, when you flip it on the head into a more positive thing, that mm -hmm. you know, nowadays, if if somebody were to to resign from the business, I don't get that empty feeling. I see it as yeah. okay. Yeah. Well, this is the time to to redesign how we do stuff, and yeah, yeah really time, time to rethink. Are we doing it right? Yeah, yeah, 
Excellent. You know? Another thing was um, the hiring of, of employees and hiring the right fit. Yes. And and then even, even when you hire that right fit, treating them really, really well. You know, the lesson that I learned there is that those people look after you even after they leave you because yes. we, we've been in a position now where we st- I have conversations very regularly with previous employees from my company. They refer business to me. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we contract them in on projects still if they have the capacity to work with us. Mm. Um, and we have such a good relationship with them because we looked after them. And okay. they, you, you know, they, the, the cultural fit within our organization was just amazing. It was yeah. Good, yeah. yeah, it's excellent when they become your agents out there. And- Yes. So, Stuart, how do you balance your personal life and the demands of running a business? Okay, so I'm I'm not really good at this, I must admit. But um, I do have other businesses outside of Tanaka as well. I'm a bit of an an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. from a serial perspective. Um, But what I do know that I do need to do, and I, I try and do this, you know, with intention, is block book time that is specific mm-hmm. to my personal time, my family and friends. And then on top of that, I make a point of when I am spending that time with my family and friends, that um, it is, uh, you know, I'm present. I'm present oh, in that time, mm-hmm. not thinking about um, work and business. You know, uh, any entrepreneur will, will say, like, you actually can't switch your brain off. Yes. It, it, you, you're constantly thinking about that next step you know or constantly thinking about the challenges that you're facing and how you're going to solve them and what the options are and the best ways to do that so it is very very difficult to to balance that and and just take that time out yeah yeah um, it, it reminds me in the picture of my mind where i sit and watch two people in the restaurant and they've taken this time out to be together and both on their cell phones yeah yeah you're not, not present yeah mm. I think that's, you know, put your cell phone away. That helps. Yeah. And, uh, my wife would support that, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> so when recruiting new team members, uh, Stuart, um, what, what do you look for? Okay. We, you know, because we've been around for, for the 30 years, yeah. we've, we've had some hit and misses right in the beginning. But for the last, I would say, 15 years, we've got it really, really right. I mean, I've employed some awesome people. And... Um, the the I think the most important thing is we put cu- the culture first, our company culture first. And one of the things that we did do when we in in our recruitment process is we we would do the initial interview. When I say we myself and and other directors in the business, mm-hmm. we would do the initial interview, um, just to see whether or not we like the people. Yeah, and then we would narrow it down to say three people, and then we'd get the team that they're going to be working with to interview them and those three people and then awesome. come back to us with their Thank feedback. Yeah. yeah. And, and that gave us that sort of edge in terms of making sure that the people that they were going to work with could see that they could work with that person and that that person was responsive to them and they could respond yeah. back and communication um, was good. And, you know, all the things that yeah. not, um, that, that it's personality based and not skills based. Yes, yes. You know, the skills can be taught. So, yeah, yeah. for us, it, it's it's the personality. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, and that's worked really, really well for us. And actually, coach, you talk about your identity, your beliefs, and your your values. Yeah, you know, they must, yeah. must be a fit otherwise. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, what are the you know people talk about entrepreneurs? They look at you as running your own businesses, as you said. You know, what are the common misconceptions people have about entrepreneurs? Um, for me, I think, you know, I have conversations with uh, people on a regular basis where they have a groundbreaking idea and they think I'm going to go out there now and be an entrepreneur. I'm going to, you know, quit yes. my job. I have this groundbreaking idea and I think it's going to make me a millionaire, you know. Um, that, that for me is a big misconception conception because entrepreneurship is not about coming up with the idea and running with it you know um i think the the reality is uh people hire a product or a service to solve their problem they cut customers yes. they hire a product or a service to solve a problem and if 
that person who is going to start that business is not going out there and doing the necessary research to understand whether or not they have a solution to that problem and it's a good solution and it's one that is possibly better than competing products that are out there, um, then um, having a ground, what they perceive as a groundbreaking idea is actually not not entrepreneurial. Yeah. Yeah, you, you need to you need to focus on the problem that you're going to solve. Yeah. So so we talk about uh, change for me, it talks about dissatisfaction. You know, understand what your potential prospect or your prospect is not happy with in his business and and then yes. offer him a solution for that. You know, because it's yeah. always in, in it's also always about you know what's in it for them. What what do they get out of it? So so we take that a little step further where um, sometimes the the solution that you're looking at, there's competitors that can offer that same solution. Yeah. Is we look at the journey, you know, before you the solution and after the solution. Yes. And we see what are the competitors maybe not doing in those spaces. Yes. Because that's where the unmet needs lie. Yeah. And then and then if you can adapt your solution to incorporate something in those spaces, then you you'll have something that's of obviously differentiating and um uh, adds even that extra bit of value to what you know the customer was initially looking for yeah, yeah. so almost getting into that blue ocean strategy type thing exactly yes yeah, yeah. yeah. look uh, you know people will catch up the competition will yeah. catch up they'll stop doing it they'll copy you and then you yeah. know suddenly the time so you have to keep looking at that and evolving yeah absolutely so what advice would you give new business owners with regard to finances? Okay, for me, it's always been cash flow. Cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, and finances. Cash flow is king. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, um, you know, uh, uh, one of the very first people we employed when we started the business was someone to make sure that our customers were paying us on time. Yes. Um, you know, yeah. that was their primary responsibility. They had other, you know, things to do as well. Yeah. But their primary thing was make sure our customers pay us on time. Um, that was number one. And then um, the the other thing is is obviously costs and yeah. managing yeah. managing our costs in a way where we know that the the impact on our cash flow is is you know uh, yeah. going to be as little as possible. Um, and then there was you know a little lesson that I learned uh, from somebody quite a long time ago where. And they said things like your VAT and your tax and yes. take that, that money off mm. as soon as you receive it, put it in an account yeah. where you can't really see it. And then you know what the real cash flow looks like. So you don't yes. fall into the trap of using the money yeah. you owe the VAT and all the tax man. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Now, big danger uh, that there's money in the toll, so let's spend it and uh, people not be yeah. Yeah. Especially when you have uh, sort of seasonal businesses as well, you get that up and down, almost project based as well. I think. Yeah, we we're, we're very project based, so that's yeah, that's key. Okay. So five years from now, where do you see Tanaka and yourself? So yeah, we're right now we're looking at expanding our services outside of South Africa, uh, specifically building some partnerships in Kenya and Namibia. So we're hoping that um, you know we'll have partners in north north of our borders in africa very very soon and then at the same time we believe that the services that we've designed uh, can, del can deliver quality to the uk and the us market at, okay. a, at a lower cost so so ideally we want to be able to deliver these services remotely from yeah. south africa um to to those international uh, businesses at a, at a lower cost excellent uh, we also looking at developing our online training uh, yeah. uh, system to transfer these innovation and, and uh, experience design skills to mm -hmm. entrepreneurs. Um, and so that they can become, uh, will know how to innovate with, with certain success around their products yeah. and services. And then uh, finally, um, we the ultimate goal is actually that, that that side of the business is running so well that we're able to take on projects that are really, really going to change people's lives, you know, ones that impact uh, uh, people that, you know, uh, never expected that they would be able to get some kind of solution for the problems that they have, yes. Um, yes. you know, whether it's in the basic needs space or, mm. 
you know, areas where where people may have disabilities and things like that. So yes, we, yes. we really have to work in, in, in innovation in those spaces. Okay. So, so really getting better, making people's lives better, so living up to that. Exactly. Yeah, and having that direct impact rather than yeah. a, yeah. an impact through a third party. Yeah. yeah. I, I think just if we can help, you know, the economy grow and, and the community as a result gets benefit. We're already doing that, you know. Having a yeah. profitable business, you employ people and they take a salary and they spend it in the community and it helps everybody. What's the one question that I should have asked you but didn't? And what, what do you think? Is, what is the answer? Um, I, I might have touched on this already a little bit, but um, I think that uh, the one question is, is that whatever industry you're in, um, there's competition. So how best do I recommend that entrepreneurs can ensure that their product or service is the one of choice? And I and, and I think I've touched a bit on this, but yes. for us, it is to to really really understand your customer. Uh, it, it's yeah. you know what do they what do they want to get done, yeah. and then understand what are the needs around getting that job done that are unmet and that you could solve for those needs because. Then lies the differentiation between you and your 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 competition. Yes, and and it's it's almost guaranteeing you success. Yeah, it's yeah, uh, you know if 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 you can be that business that mm. solves the problem and meets the unmet needs around that, mm. then those customers are going to become your advocates and they're going to mm. refer their their friends and family to you and and other businesses to you. Mm. Um, and that's how you become a leader in your industry. So, so really creating that value around your brand and, and your product delivery. And people won't necessarily look at what it costs only. They'll, they will certainly look at the benefits first. But it's it's the it's the being the human-centered side of it, the customer-centric yeah. side of it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so those decisions that you're making and, and those that direction that you're going in as an entrepreneur yeah. needs to be centered around that customer and not centered around what you know you can produce and what you know you can okay. deliver on. Yeah. yeah. So here's the last question from my side. If you had a magic wand and you could spread some magic dust on your business, which area of your business would that be on and why? Um, I think it's it's on um, having the 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 customers that we like to deal with, um, having them understand the impact that we can have on their business, like like quickly wow. understand it and, and comprehend it. Yeah. Um, I think our struggle as a company is very much conveying the message of what we can do and how yeah. we can do it and, how, and that impact can have on the business. Yeah. Yeah. And making sure that the, the potential customer or the potential business that we're going to be mm -hmm. doing work with believes that. Yeah, it knows it have that in, impact. Yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, almost that magic look, wand. Yeah, no, sorry, it's, sorry. it's almost like you need to educate them around what you're offering. And yeah, and and it's it's difficult because you know the the thing is is with the processes and the methods and the frameworks that we use, it it's not always um, you know uh, one thing within a business that we can change yeah. and make a big difference in. It. Mm. There's multiple. Uh, things that we can apply our skills to. Yes. Um, so, so it is very much again about understanding from our perspective what our customer wants to solve, but we yeah. don't know that from the outside. No, you. They, you they know that, and they have to be able to communicate that to us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And if they can communicate that to us, then we can go in there and say, well, we can take that challenge on for you, and yeah. we can show you what we can do. Um, Absolutely. But. Yeah, yeah, it's it's oh. it's about them knowing that there is a solution yeah. out there. I heard you the other night on a, on a webinar. Um, they say only about eight percent of people are ready to buy. You know, and, yeah. And there's a lot of people underneath this eight uh, percent that you need to educate. You need to, you know, be constantly involved with them and and be be growing your business and and how to grow theirs. Yeah, excellent. That, I think for us, it's that willingness from a customer to know that they need to invest in innovation or customer experience and um, that investment is going to 
uh, uh, you know, exponentially grow their business and, and yeah. get the returns that they want. Yeah. And the, but the, it's that willingness to invest in it. That the, those eight percent, you want them to be more people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah absolutely. You want to grow that. Stuart, so thank you so much for your time and your effort and your wisdom. I really enjoyed that. And I think uh, our listeners will certainly get a lot of benefit from watching your video. And oh, Thanks, Bert. Appreciate it. Yeah. I'll, I look forward to seeing it myself. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you.